life, wisdom. I'm Psyche Truth correspondent Karina Rachel, and today on the Truth Talks, we're talking about vitamins and vitamin toxicity. I'm joined today by Joseph Strickland. He's an applied clinical nutritionist and has a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition Science. So before I get started, I want to ask you, if you take a multivitamin or any kind of vitamin, please let us know what kind of vitamins you take and if you take them on a regular basis. A lot of you have asked about vitamin toxicity and recommendations for taking a multivitamin. So today we're going to talk about the dangers of vitamin toxicity and the things you need to know and the benefits of taking a multivitamin. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad to be here. So maybe you can just give us a little background on what is a vitamin, why would it be beneficial for someone to take vitamins, and if that's something you recommend. I definitely can do that. Uh, one of the important things about vitamins <clears throat> is getting the proper nutrients from your food. Vitamins are originally found from food. That's where they come from. And they allow us to digest the food, use it for energy, convert everything. Um, and if you don't have the proper vitamins, then your nervous system can't utilize energy correctly, uh, especially with the B vitamins. Uh, vitamin D, for instance, which is all the rage right now, you know, uh, doctors are telling people, Hey, you've got low vitamin D. It's cause we're not out in the sun as much as we used to be for various reasons. But, um, vitamin D actually takes calcium from your gut and then brings it to the blood supply. So then it can be taken to bone so you don't get osteoporosis and things like that. So, um, if you didn't have enough vitamin D, then you wouldn't utilize calcium. Your bones couldn't be strong, things like that. So different vitamins have different things that they do. Um, but I think in general, that's a good summary of that. Right. So the idea that, you know, originally vitamins should be coming from our food, but chances are most Americans probably aren't getting all the vitamins they need from their diet. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. There are several reasons for that. And uh, one of the, the biggest changes is how farming has been done. Uh, basically, when we farmed organically and also with crop rotation, one season you'd grow bananas, for instance, and then another one, maybe you'd grow oranges. But each of the different types of fruit and vegetables uses different minerals and vitamins and things from the soil, right? And so basically, when you grow the same thing over and over again, eventually, you deplete the soil of the minerals for that particular vegetable that it would normally use. And so after World War II, they had a lot of bomb uh, making materials left over. Uh, they weren't making as many bombs. And so they started to use uh, phosphorus, nitrogen, um, and potassium to fertilize the soil. Well, that's three out of 77 minerals, wow. right? And so when you continue to grow the same thing with just those three minerals, you actually create a deficiency in the vegetable or the fruit, which when its immune system gets lowered, they have to use more chemicals to spray on the plants to keep the bugs from eating them, right? right? Or to keep diseases away. So essentially what happens is the chemical companies love it because they sell both the fertilizer as well as um, the solution to the lowered immune system of the, of the vegetable or fruit. And so when that lo lowers the nutrient value of the fruit or vegetable, you then get less of it. Now, there's different studies, and, you know, people could debate this all day long. There's, you know, you got half a dozen people that say, oh, there's no nutrient difference now to before, but there's just as much, you know, on, on the other side. Um, in fact, there was a, an article that, that somebody told me about a few weeks ago that said no difference between organic nutrition of a food and a regular uh, food. And what was interesting about the study is if you actually, if you actually read through it, 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 towards the middle or the end of the thing, after you read just the, the, the top line, it basically said, yeah, there's no difference nutritionally, but you don't get, you know, this pesticide and this pesticide and that pesticide, right. you know, all these things that are on the vegetable. So regardless of, of whether the nutrition content is down, that can be argued. The one thing that definitely can't be argued is that those chemicals that are on the fruits and vegetables aren't as good for you. 
Right. And certainly you made a really valid point that a plant gets its nutrients and its vitamins out of the soil. Exactly. So it just makes sense that if your soil is depleted of nutrients, then whatever grows in the soil you know, will also be actually absolutely true and and that that can go as far as the the fruits and vegetables it can also go as you know the the animals that we eat the the cows the the pigs the chickens that sort of thing if they're eating you know things that are nutritionally void and we're eating them ah we get you know hit on <laughs> on all ends so we're really dependent on the lower life forms uh to survive and so that's one of the reasons that that we're even talking about vegetables and minerals and, and eating them is because the sources of food that we have are missing those. And so then in change, we are too. It might not seem like we are because we're eating the same foods and maybe more of the foods than we were a hundred years ago. I mean, certainly uh, how many people do you see in America dying of starvation? Not very many, That's you very know, true. <laughs> you go to Africa or see, you know, these videos, you know, talking about the kids that are hungry and seeing their ribs and things like that. I mean, that that's, you know, I'm glad we don't have that situation, but at the same time, our nu nutrients in our food could be, you know, heightened. So maybe that raises the question of taking a supplement, taking a, like a multivitamin, for instance, mm -hmm. what kind of recommendations could you give on choosing a good multivitamin, maybe what to avoid mm -hmm. if we're looking for vitamin supplements? Yeah. Uh, vitamin supplements, there, there's, there's a ton on the market. It's a huge industry. Uh, and one of the things that's actually, that I find interesting about it is that a lot of the companies that produce these supplements are actually pharmaceuticals. You know, they're, they're using pharmaceutical uh, companies and, and, you know, they might have different names, but, um, the process actually starts with, uh, let's say I wanted to make a vitamin. Um, and I said, you know, I wanted to have this, this, and this in it. Well, what I do, I don't have a farm, so I can't grow those nutrients. So I have to find somebody that produces those nutrients. So I buy them from somebody. Now I don't have a place to process them, right? So what I do is I get the nutrients, I then hire a company to create those nutrients. They send it to somewhere to put it all together. And then I hire a different company to label it. And so then I have the supplement, Joe's supplement. Now, um, in that whole process, I didn't actually do anything other than make the money on promoting that supplement. So there are a lot of supplements out there that... Honestly, whether they're good or bad, I mean, it's not my place to say, but there are a lot of overpriced supplements because you're paying for each level of that particular supplement. So I personally look for supplements that have, you know, either they're making it or there's some connection with the processing of it. Uh, Juice Plus is an example of a company that, um, you know, they're actually not just hiring somebody to, to do it for them. Standard Process is an example. Mega Food. The, the, there's different There's different brands. And I don't really necessarily get brand because I'm not getting paid from anybody. There's no advertisements here. But um, it's important to look for something that, that the manufacturing process isn't just some guy in a barn hiring out, you know, somebody from China to get the nutrients and, you know, all this sort of thing. Right. But basically, um, I definitely do recommend nutrients and, and, and getting supplements. And the thing to look for is something that's from food. Number one, you, you want something that's not just a fractured piece of something, but that actually comes from from food, uh, osceola cherries for vitamin C, oranges, you know, things like that. These are things that have vitamin C. So in a vitamin supplement, vitamin C supplement, you should see, you know, maybe orange, maybe osceola cherries, something like that in the ingredients. And on my website, nutritionaustin.com, I actually have a chart which shows you, you know, if you're looking for vitamin A, if it says carrot, it's a natural source. If it says palamate, that is a synthetic form. It's something that they, they take one substance and then put it through some chemical processing so that under a microscope, it looks the same or similar to um, what that vitamin A would look like from a carrot. In other words, and sometimes you can actually find supplements that will say, you know, whole food supplement on the label. So that it, might be a good sign. Exactly. Uh, Rainbow, I think, is a company that's out there that does that mega food juice plus. And, and there, there's more kind of starting all the time. Um, but yeah, in general, you want something that, that, that comes from food or if not completely from food, um, it does have some food base there. And the reason f for talking about the food base is because there's, there's something called phytochemicals 
And it's a big word, but all it basically means is all the other things that are in the food besides just the vitamins that they found under a microscope. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in a carrot, there's more than just vitamin A or beta carotene, as they would call it. There, there's actually, I think, 200 other things in that carrot besides that. So when you have a whole food multivitamin, you're essentially getting that beta carotene, but you're getting those 199 other nutrients. And maybe you need those other nutrients in order to use that beta carotene because bodies have been eating carrots for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. They haven't had beta carotene in an isolated form since, you know, I think 1940, 1950. Interesting. Yeah. So um, maybe what are some other things that people should maybe look for in a multivitamin? I know that for myself personally, I take a multivitamin that also has trace minerals in mm. it. Is that something that you would recommend? Absolutely. I think that's great. But one of the, one of the things that I look for in a, in a multivitamin, almost, it, it's sad that I have to say this, but almost as much as what's in it is what's not in it. <laughs> you know, um, I, I had somebody bring in some prenatal vitamins. For instance, this is, this is a vitamin that the, the mother needs so that the baby doesn't get spina bifida. You know, it has folic acid in it, uh, a, a needed nutrient for the brain and the nervous system of the baby so that it, you know, doesn't get spina bifida. But, um, I was shocked because on the label for this, this prescribed, um, vitamin, it actually had titanium dioxide in it. I don't know why you want titanium in a, in a, in that. Um, you've also got, um, the FD and C color number, yellow number six and red 40 and all these sort of things. And so you definitely want to find something that that's not loaded with a whole bunch of chemicals. Mm -hmm. You know, you want the, the vitamin component and the food component and not, you know, all these things you can't pronounce or that, you know, they're just not needed. Right. Okay. So what are some other vitamins that you might recommend? Maybe in addition to a, a multi, I know you mentioned B vitamins earlier. Is mm -hmm. that something you would recommend that people supplement? You know, it depends. I think that, you know, it, it's hard for me as a nutritionist to recommend just one, you know, in general for everybody, you know, I work with people and, and make individual plans based on what, what an individual needs. Um, but I think in general, um, a good multivitamin, multimineral will get your, your majority of things. I also like some of these, these green powders. You know, you have to look at the ingredients and see what's in them if they're, they're real food. But um, that's another good way of getting those nutrients. And, um, you know, some people need Bs and some people need Cs. A, a good indication of whether you need vitamin C is whether or not you're bruising. If you're getting a lot of bruises on your body and, and you know, they, they take a long time to heal, that's a possibility that, you know, you might not be getting enough vitamin C or nosebleeds is another one, you know. Uh, that just means that the, the blood vessels aren't as strong as they should be and vitamin C is, is certainly part of that. Um, B vitamins, you know, you would, you would use that for energy um, or in some cases, um, there's some parts of the B vitamin complex that deal with helping the nervous system have more energy. And then there are some parts of the B complex that actually help it, help it calm down. Right. And so, um, B complex is definitely something that, you know, if you're in a high stress environment, it can definitely help with that. Some people really like B12 shots, you know, cause they think it helps them with energy. And, and certainly, you know, Montel Williams is a great example. You know, he's out there, he's got MS and, you know, he's using a lot of natural things. Um, and B12 shots are one of those. So I think, you know, it's good to kind of look around and see what's available. And, and definitely it's good to, 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 if you don't research it yourself or you don't want to research it yourself, find somebody who has researched it that you can trust and, and talk to them about it. Right. Yeah. So let's move over to the topic of vitamin toxicity. Mm -hmm. Cause this is something that a lot of people have expressed concern about. Yeah. Can you just maybe in general talk about how common is vitamin toxicity? <laughs> what are, what is somebody's chance of actually becoming you know, toxic from taking, let's say a multivitamin, for instance. Well, a uh, multivitamin, it would be really hard, uh, because the, the only vitamins that are, that are quote unquote toxic, if you even want to use that word, um, are like your vitamin A or vitamin D that, um, are what are called fat soluble vitamins. Basically they're vitamins that can stay in the body. So you take vitamin D, your body actually holds on to, to that 
as you go. Most vitamins, uh, vitamin C, vitamin B, um, actually just whatever you don't use, you just create expensive urine. Uh, it just goes right out. Um, so the majority of them you don't have to worry about. But vitamin A, vitamin D, you theoretically could take too much of that. But in a multivitamin type situation, they're never going to have enough of those particular ones to get too much of that. Uh, and and more, m most of that toxicity comes from synthetic forms of a vitamin. So vitamin A palamate, not from food. You get into the 20,000 IU, 30,000 IU range. I wouldn't take that every day, you know, but when you're talking about a, a supplement that's created from food, um, number one, with vitamin D, you're maybe going to get 400 IU a day, which, you know, you look at what doctors are prescribing and they're prescribing when somebody's low, 50,000 IU a day. And so in IU is just international units. It's just a measure Right. Um, of a certain substance. So, um, but basically, toxicity is not something that, that really happens very often. I think last time I checked, there hasn't been a death in about nine years due to vitamin toxicity, quote unquote. Wow. Yeah. Whereas people are dying from toxicity from their prescribed medications or <laughs> from all kinds of other toxic things that we're exposed to. Right. Well, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, I will say I'm a nutritionist. However, um, I do see that there are people that, that are on prescription medications and, and it's known that they cause nutritional deficiencies. Um, it's known that, um, there are some medications out there where you can't even eat vegetables. And I mean, how <laughs> safe can that be? Not you know, really <laughs> it doesn't sound safe to me. Um, you know, now it, it might save their life for a while. Um, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know what they're dealing with, but um, in general, uh, yes, pharmaceutical drugs have their level of safety. The FDA does their job for that. Um, some would argue that they don't. I don't, I don't really want to get into that. However, uh, on the vitamin side, um, very rare to have any trouble from that. What would be, you, you know, would you say would be the amount of vitamin D at which it would become toxic and a danger to your health? Well, you know, if you were taking 10,000 IU a day, and you did that for a year without checking your blood, I would check your blood if you're taking 10,000 IU a day for a year. Mm -hmm. um, I would say probably 3,000 IU to 5,000 IU a day, pretty much no chance of any trouble there. Okay. Um, but, you know, I think it's a good idea just, you know, with your yearly uh, blood check, you know, to have your vitamin D level check and just make sure you're not, you know, over in the 100 range. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. That was my pleasure. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope that you will click that like button and give us a thumbs up. You can learn more about Joseph Strickland at his website, nutritionaustin.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel so you can see all of our future videos. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.